studying is a lifelong process. It's a time. To start off with and like how difficult the different parts. What on? Hi guys and welcome to Tea's World. Obligatory introductions. If it's your first time here, hey, I'm T. I'm a fourth year studying medicine at the University of New South Wales. I found this microphone lying around, so I thought it would be a good prop. This video might be part of a series of what I wish I personally knew before going to medical school and you know what you should know as well. It's been a while since I've done one of these talking videos. Bear with me and as always like, comment, subscribe. Also for these videos, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you the answer what I'm going to be talking about in one sentence at the very beginning so that you don't waste your time. But I highly encourage you to just sit through. You can even like 1.5, 2x speed me, bask in my knowledge that I'm sharing with you. Just kidding. But yeah, the gist of today's video is going to be this following sentence. Studying is a lifelong process and you need to think about whether your values um, and your long-term goals are compatible with the realities of medicine as both a job and as a career. So, I guess it should have been obvious, but you know, back then, I wasn't really thinking too much about specializing because I was thinking, how about I get through the hurdle of actually making it in and getting accepted into med school first, and then I'll think about everything else later. But something that you need to be aware of is that, obviously, exams don't finish when you graduate. After you graduate, it's not like, oh, internship, I'm done. No, the reality is that after you graduate, you still have more barriers, and many more barriers to surpass, especially in terms of training. If you want to become a general practitioner or a GP, there's more exams for that. If you want to go into some specialties, you know, for example, cardiology, neurology, exams. There's still going to be exams. Exams are both going to be clinical based, but there's also going to be more written based exams. And especially if you're aiming for some of the really competitive specialties, you know, surgery, dermatology, radiology, ophthalmology, and I can't say this, but anesthesia, you know what I mean? I just say anesthetics. The gist of it is I'm pretty sure most, if not all of these require exams. So you need to consider that you're going to be studying for quite a while and that studying does not end. Even though I haven't graduated med school yet, my impression, it might change later though, is that studying is something that's lifelong. You're going to keep studying, you're going to keep learning, you're going to keep taking exams. This will continue for quite a while, I would say at least into the next decade. So maybe like your definitely your 20s, probably your 30s as well. Something to take in mind of is that different fields and specialties have different requirements. So they're all on the website, but all the specialties have different colleges um, who pick. So if you want to go into like, you know, surgery, there's going to be different requirements for you to meet. And I think for some of these specialties, you need to submit like a CV, you need to do research, interviews as well. And it's not uncommon to pursue like higher education, you know, doing a master's or doing a PhD. And of course, we all know this, but there's no guarantee that you will be successful. You may fail exams, you may have to redo exams. And especially for the competitive specialties, you may be sacrificing seven to eight years or even more of your life just to not get in. That's a real possibility that we should all consider as well. And sometimes, even if you pass everything, so you know you pass your written, you pass your clinicals, there's no guarantee that you will actually get onto a training program, especially for the competitive specialties, which is something to consider. In terms of employment, say you've reached like consultant status, there's also no guarantee that you will be able to, you know, get a consultant job exactly where you want to be. And I think this is especially true if you want to be in a metro location, so that's metropolitan. And just kind of related to like how hard and long studying may be, or how long or drawn out the training process and process of trying to get into a training specialty may be. A lot of people, you know, have questions about career versus family. I think most people, if not everyone, faces this quandary to an extent. But I do think it's more marked for females, you know, especially because of the whole pregnancy, having children and so forth. I do think that it is a very serious choice that you're going to have to consider at some point along the road. And I do think that having kids may affect your training progression, but obviously I have no experience. So if you want to just go try and like ask around if possible. Not sure about you, but at least for me, when I received my offer at 18, I I did not really think about the whole concept of, oh, maybe this career could potentially impact my plan to try and start a family down the track. Because, you know, I was 18. Who thinks about that? But yeah, some people do, which I respect, but I didn't. Okay. Oh, and also something that I do think is quite common is that as a medical student, 
you're going to be graduating quite a while after your friends. For example, some of my friends have already started, you know, working full time whilst I am halfway through my degree. So sometimes you may feel a little bit of not necessarily an imbalance, but you may feel like you're at a different stage of life compared to your friends. You may feel you're not a full-fledged adult if that's a term. My advice would be that everyone walks their path differently. Our paths aren't all the same and you know it's just at the end of the day it is what it is. Eventually hopefully you'll graduate but you know for now you may feel like your friends are a bit ahead of you in terms of life and living and being adults and yeah that's just the way things are you know. In terms of study this cup was for free by Arquanus. from stress us with. That was really loud. Yeah, just in terms of studying as well, you have to be aware that everyone is different. I keep saying this, but it, it really is true. Everyone's experience is different. This is especially true for medical school as well. You know, some people may be just like chilling, like they're vibing. It's pretty easy for them. They're able to balance very well, have a good social life, go to parties, do a lot of experience and some stuff. Some people may find medical school a bit more challenging, whilst others may be, you know, immensely struggling through this whole process. So I guess just be aware that you don't know which category you may fall into until you start medical school something else that you may experience that i didn't is that the transition from high school or uni or your work or you know wherever you were before you started med school into med school may be not what you expect of it it may be a lot easier about the same or a lot harder than you thought it would be and that is okay at the end of the day we never really know until we're actually in that environment for some people you may find yourself being like top of the class or like pretty high up in terms of your cohort and then you go into med school and you realize oh I'm just average, or you know, I'm below average, or I'm at the bottom. Or for some people, oh, I'm still at the top. So I guess it's something that changes for everyone, um, just something to be aware of. My advice would be to temper your expectations accordingly. For some people, you can. For me, I wouldn't recommend, you know, expecting like big things. I just came in with the expectation that overall I may have a hard time, I may struggle with it, but I will pass and I will be okay in the end. Basically, the main gist of this is that everyone is different at the end of the day. If you ask 10 people for advice about med school, they're probably going to give you 10 different answers that may have some similarities. So I would say try not to get too hung up on everyone's advice, even though I'm giving advice in this video, so it's a little bit hypocritical. Okay, you can listen to advice, but just filter out and choose which advice you choose to take in. And I think something that is important is that yes, advice is good, but if you're just listening to advice and you're not actually doing anything yourself, that's not good either, which is a trap I fell into. In terms of just studying and study tips, to be honest, I still haven't found my optimal method. I think for the past, like for my whole degree, and in all of high school, I've been searching for, you know, what's the perfect study method? What's the perfect way to be really efficient and to remember everything? And I've looked at so many, you know, study blogs, study tips, all those videos. And at the end of the video, yes, I learned something, but I found that I never actually applied anything that I learned to my own life. Something I learned is that sometimes you may consume certain content in order to feel like you've accomplished something or you've achieved something. This was the case for me with studying as I just explained. You know, I would watch a lot of study content but I would never actually study because I watched it so it made me feel like it, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think from now on I'm just gonna not watch those videos, just head down and do it and study. The best study tip is to start studying. Yes, work smarter, not harder, but the first step is to make sure you're even working in the first place. Burnouts? My burnout is kind of common. I think the main message would be to just take care of yourself in med school. It may be quite difficult to try and balance all the aspects of your life, especially if you're trying to balance your sleep, diet, going to the gym, having a social life, keeping in touch with your friends and so forth, having side hustles, passive income, balancing jobs as well, it can be quite difficult. So I think... I don't think there's a magic formula. You just have to choose what to prioritize and what to sacrifice. I don't have advice for that, but I would just say do the best you can, but try and prioritize what and who you think is important um, and who, who and what you value most 
in your life. But sometimes you may have times where you only have enough bandwidth to focus on yourself in order to pass your studies. Or sometimes you may not even have the bandwidth to focus on your studies at all because you're burnt out. I have no advice for this. Just know that, yes, it is tough, but hope that you can get through it okay. And that is very bleak, but yeah, no advice. That's pretty much everything I have to say for this first video at least. So the gist of it is, you know, studying is lifelong. There is no guarantee that you will get on a program. There is no guarantee that even after you get on a program, you will get a job in your desired location. You need to be thinking about what or who it is you prioritize, what relationships you prioritize and what relationships you want to retain. And in terms of the whole family thing, at the end of the day, if you only had to choose one between career or family, what decision would you make? And I do think that is a big decision to make. So have a think about that as well. I've been speaking for 80 minutes. All right, so that's the end of part one. I'll catch you in the next part. Leave comments, leave questions you have, leave regrets you have, if you have any as well. I would love to hear them. But yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe because it does help out the algorithm. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh. Hi, guys. <coughs> Hi, guys. Hi and welcome to T's World. Um, oh, hi guys and welcome to T's World today.